All right, hello and good morning. Today I figured we'd do a quick army review of the armies of Great Britain. Overall, the army matches a really toolkit sort of method. If any nation has a unit or a type or a special rule, Great Britain gets an equivalent of it. Let's call it home nation advantage. If you want a German MMG, German LMG bonus, you can get that for you as like a five point upgrade, like the Vickers MMG or LMG. Uh, if you want Japanese bonsai, they have a rule for that. Anyone that gets anything, Americans getting move and fire, chindits can take the same thing. It's just the toolkit that lets you build your force the way you want. So rather than go over the entire army and every single unit in it, I'm just going to hit a few of the special rules, a few of the big things that make it a really good army in specific cases, and a few of the strategies that come out of those. So typical army special rules, you get three. One of which is the toolkit one of them all. First of all, you have bombardment. Whenever you're doing preparatory bombardment for a scenario, you get to roll two dice, pick the highest. Just ensures you spread some pins around and take care of whatever units you might not want to later. Artillery support. Along the same lines, you get a free artillery forward observer in your army. Similar to how the Soviets get a free infantry unit, except yours is the artillery observer for a strike rather than a full 12-man unit. Lastly, national characteristic. This is the toolkit rule. Every British army may pick one of the following five characteristics to fit it. This can be anything you choose, and they include things such as charge bonuses, unable for your opponent to react to charge, and then just general firing bonuses with rapid fire, saying you get an extra shot for every X-Men. Overall, these do pretty well. Uh, some people will take rapid fire a lot and just a herd of rifles to sit in the back and handle things that way. People will sometimes take their artillery observer and buy a second since it doesn't take your slot for it and go really hard on naval bombings, which we'll see later because you can use that to relatively pin down your opponent. In the army book, they get the standard units as everyone else, a regular infantryman for 10 points. They have their version of special forces with commandos and paratroopers. And they've got their slew of tanks, some American, some their own, like the Churchill. Um, a few key units to keep track of. The SAS Jeep, introduced in the main book, is a four machine gun Jeep for 60 points at regular. This is a great vehicle because it takes your armored car slot. Doesn't take one of your transport holds because it cannot move men. But rather than paying up to 150 plus points for something like an AEC with one gun, this gets you an HMG two LMGs, and then another LMG facing the front. So this is just toolkit dot jeep, great for spreading pins, taking care of a few infantrymen without spending a lot of points for it. Additionally, the Bren carrier is seen in mass in several British armies because for, again, 60 points, you can take two LMGs, correction, the second LMG is a 10 point upgrade, so 70 points for two LMGs, carrying five men well, on a tracked transport that can make a full reverse rate move because of the turn on the spot rule. So these are great for moving weapons teams, put in a flamethrower and a piot if you like, traveling small groups of infantrymen if you want to take commandos in small pods or air force in small pods. The rest of the British book itself doesn't add that much special to it. However, the D-Day book, as it came out in summer, added one of the most notable additions slash changes to the British Army. The forward naval observer acts in all ways like your regular artillery observer, except his blast now has this half a page worth of text because it can do more pins, attack a larger area, and then also have a higher chance of damaging any unit, including vehicles, regardless of pen value. So this is a little nutsy because of the just sheer upgrade in power, but that upgrade in power is only 50 points. So rather cheap up, quote unquote, upgrade to a unit. However, it was just a standalone unit until it got the additional text that it may be part of your force as a replacement to your free artillery observer for just 50 points. Last line of text. This allows you to pay a total of 50 points for one or 200 points for a pair and take two artillery observers that now have D6 plus 9 inches of range. If you roll that out to a full circle, each of them gets 18. That's 3 feet 
of attack radius without adding the d6 to it. So massive area if you spread them, or just total damage if you put them on top of each other and hit one area. This goes along with the idea of the British bombardment idea from the first two special rules, getting a, a bonus on your prep bombardment and a bonus on your free artillery observer. If you can pin down your opponent's entire army, they don't get to play the game. Most of the time when you see people do take the regular artillery observer, they're taking it for pins, not kills, because kills only happen on the six. Pins happen in every case. So why not just throw two or three pins on your opponent's entire army? Some people have a hard time justifying this because an artillery observer would cost 100 points. In Britain, you can just take one for free, so why wouldn't you use a strategy? People who want to double down are usually those that take the second artillery observer on top of it. Or, if you're really going to ensure that most of the army is pinned up, or maybe even destroyed, you take naval observers. The hope with this is that your opponent's army is too pinned up to act, and that they don't rally. On the worst case scenario, your opponent has recognized what you're doing, rallied his entire force that you've put pins on, and all you've done is delay them a turn, gives you some board advantage and some free maneuverability, but it doesn't really take care of any units. The best case scenario is you bomb your opponent, they say two pins isn't that bad, I can probably pass that check, and somewhere between a quarter and a third of their army doesn't act for a turn, two turns, hopefully the entire game, and you're suddenly playing with a mass point advantage. Speaking of mass point advantage, when Western Desert came out, we got the other great strategy for Britain now in the Indian National Army. Now, the Western Desert Great Book adds several different national characteristics you can take for Britain. The way these work is they replace that toolkit rule from before, but they do not replace all of the Army Special Rules. For example, you will still get prep bombardment bonuses and your free artillery observer, which could be a naval observer, but you will not get your rapid fire or up and atom, your choice of the special characteristic. Instead, you get this selection. Now you can take different toolkits in this. The South Africans are a lot of fun. They have some pin refusal. Um, the New Zealanders get to take entirely Maori troops and be a very assault heavy army. However, the Indian National Army turns your British army into Soviets without having to change the models. Uh, you get the unsurpassed bravery rule. It's essentially the same as the Soviet uh, tough as nails or what's it called? I don't know. You get the Soviet reroll morale check rule that says anytime a infantry or artillery unit fails morale check and would be destroyed, just do it again and take the second result. And then again, similar to Soviets, you get a free 10-man regular infantry section armed with rifles. You may purchase additional equipment for them, but it is not free. So this is a slight upgrade to the Soviet rule, as theirs is only an inexperienced man unit, but it is 12 men and they get their upgrades for free. This is 10 man at regular, but if you wish to take the LMG they're available to take, you have to pay for it, and to tank grenades, you have to pay for it, etc. This on its own makes the army a little nutsy because you're allowed to take an additional slot of men for free. You're allowed to give your entire army the ability to reroll its morale saves. And then on top of that, you still have your bombing rules. So you may take a naval observer if you wish, or two. This really comes to life when you take tank platoons. Uh, you can see this some in infantry slots. People will take it with a mass of inexperienced men to try and make their morale better, or even take it with a herd of paratroopers or something with stubborn rule to ensure that you have to remove every man from that unit or else they're not going to leave the table. But this comes to light with an armored platoon because you now receive 100 points of men to supplement your tanks for free. All of your infantry you do bother to purchase instead of tanks they get a reroll on their morale, so you're less likely to run out of men to back up your armor. But you may pay whatever you want for armor. A lot of people take Sherman spam or Stuart spam, and then have whatever you need left to pay for infantry, plus just a little bit more on the top to make sure you're not undermanned in any scenario. Additionally, if you take that with the bombers, you can pin down an opponent's force or flip their vehicles if they also took a tank platoon. And then you're free to move your tanks into position to finish them off if necessary while your men go handle objectives, other units, etc. So there's several things you could do with the British Army as a whole. This is very much the army of gather your campaign books and put all the pieces together. 
because the more campaign books you go through, the more nutty units they get. A few great combinations they can do include taking the Indian characteristic and paratroopers to ensure that all your always 10 morale checks can reroll that 11 you roll on the first time. Then there's the addition of Bren carriers. You can take small pods of men in Maori or Gurkha paratroopers if you like, some really assault heavy units. Put them in some cars so they get a little speed and watch your opponent cringe as they try and punch things. That should be it for our good Armies of Great Britain review. Be sure to check out boltaction.easyarmy.com because they have a great list building tool. All the units up to date are on there. You can check them out. Be sure to double check any rules or questions of in your actual Bolt Action book. And see you next time.